Hi, this is 2013 Audi A4 station wagon versions with internal MMI. It means there's no controller on this vehicle. So we call internal MMI without factory navigation. So after we have the screen and radio out, also the climate control, and we, you can see all the wires hanging there. So first of all, uh, before you connect the wire, we show you one by one. From the top, you're gonna remove the disconnect the hazard buttons, uh, the connector from the back of the factory hazard buttons. Once you have this disconnect, if you have airbag light underneath the hazard buttons, you will need to connect it back when you turn the vehicle to emissions. Otherwise, you will have the airbag light goes on on the factory cluster. So at that point, you will need to use a OBD to reset or go to your local mechanic to have the airbag erase from the cluster. So after you disconnect this, if, if you don't have the airbag light underneath, under the hassle button, then you don't need to worry about that. Just leave it there. And this is the rectangle connector that we unplug from the factory screen. You will need to use our provided cable and connect to the LVDS cable that we supply with the Android screen. On this cable, what you need to use is the LVDS connector, connect with this provided cable. And also this harness come with the external mic jack input. So make sure if you want to add the external mic, you will need to connect to this harness. And this is the harness that we have here with the Android screen. And also this harness come with a front camera input if you want to add front camera. And also there's some RCA. Uh, it can be modified later on. Maybe you don't have it. It depends on different type of vehicle come with different connectors. So the most important part is the LVDS cable. You need to make sure it's connected. And uh, if you want to add front camera, that's the front camera input on this harness. And this harness also come with one USB cable, which is USB in two. This USB cable is for USB multimedia or software update. Uh, it's not doing any like fast charging for your phone so please know that so after this wire <coughs> then you remove the factory frame from the left to the right or half piece depends on the year and after we remove the factory trim panel out as you can see the trim that we need to use need to remove from from here so the, fa the factory, this is the factory hazard button. Then we remove by push two metal clips, one side on top, one side at the bottom. Remove it from the slot. And then th there was the factory frame here. So you will need to shave it and remove it. So this way is make it empty. After we shave it, remove the in inside trim panel. This is how it looks like before you install the Android screen. There will be one metal bracket. If you don't remove the panel inside, the provided metal bracket come with the Android unit will hitting the factory uh, black brazzle. So make sure that you, you remove it. <coughs> if you planning to add a backup camera, then this is the wire that we run from the back to the front with the orange wire. So after that, you leave it on top. And also the 4G antenna, GPS antenna. These two antenna is better to leave it on top of the dashboard 
uh, away from the Android screen uh, to avoid any interfering like kind of signal interfering uh, the CarPlay uh, signal from the uh, Android screen because the the Wi-Fi antenna Bluetooth antenna also uh, come with the Android screen is built in it's not the external antenna so the 4G antenna you can uh, leave it underneath the uh, uh, glove box or leave the uh, GPS antenna and 4G antenna right to the B pillar or on top of the dashboard those are the place you can do uh, leave, leave them there for easy access to the space from the bottom to the top you also can remove the glove box out so it will be three screw on the top and then two more inside and three more at the bottom so uh, this is like uh, already noticed on some of the, our instructions so we don't go through that and then you will have uh, access on the side so this way you can have more space to run the wire so let's move to the bottom to the bottom you will need to move, remove the factory climate control panel which is right here and also the radio after you have all those removed then you you can lift up this trim panel the center console so by remove this one you can use your finger to lift up from the side behind the factory storage box which is the a cigarette lighter charger over place so from the side and lift up once you have that lift up on both sides and you can put your finger here to help a little bit to release the bottom so all the clips are metal clips it's really kind of strong you will need to gen gently lift up uh, and do this slowly so after lift up then you will have all uh, access to add the uh, external knob here which is come with the unit if you have uh, 3G MMI that's the option for you if you're willing to connect like use the factory MMI controller to control the Android screen that's fine or you can add one more like the external knob and the external knob is for the selection and also easy access to the hazard buttons without uh, put your hand to the back of the Android screen and press the button that will just for your convenience so this is the idea that we relocate the hazard button behind the gear shift so <coughs> let's <coughs> talk about the connection first for the knob so as you can see there will be the connector goes to the back of the uh, <coughs> aftermarket knob and as you can see here is one T harness and also this will be one connector here so when you see this IDV-B this will need to connect to the power harness the Android power harness to IDVA so this is the main connection for the knob controller so after that you have this connect plug it in so this way connect it and how to use the T-harness this is the main idea for you if you have the airbag light on your factory hazard buttons so the way to connect is if you if you have the factory airbag light there plug in the factory male plug to the free male provided harness and the male connector goes to the factory hazard light with the airbag light there so this way we retain the airbag without have air rod on the rear show on the cluster so this is how it works on this wire if you don't want to add this external knob then you don't need to add this T harness so what you need to do is just need to install this back to your factory trim panel 
and then connect the factory plug without use this T harness. Okay, so we show you if you don't want to add the knob. If you don't want to add the knob, you just need to do it like this and then put back on the factory trim, silver trim factory panel. Then this harness, you can leave it away and disconnect this IDV plug and you can just keep this one just in case if the MMI controller doesn't work well on the Android then you can have option for it and then after you disconnect this male side this free male side you can insulate it with electrical tape and leave it inside because this carry on 5 volt power on for the external uh, aftermarket knob so let's move down to here um, so first we need to use the CAN wire which goes to the climate control on this internal MMI so the way that you unplug this is the one that you need to use the factory come with two connector one is small one is big big one and the big one will looks like this and this is the shade you need to use it and after that you will need to connect the plug right here this is the T harness that provide with our Android screen so after that you can push the red lock to lock it up and it will show 195A4Q5 okay so this is the wire and the other end of the T harness goes back to the factory climate control after that there will be one more connect to this T harness which is, which is the orange color this orange color will show you this one sticker it will show you air conditioner can and it will show can high so you will need to connect to the plug from the Android power harness on the same orange two pin plug it together and this way is to collect the can from the systems and move to down below up above of this is the factory radio so for the factory radio we only need to use the square connector this is the square connector you will need to use and how to connect it this is the connector provided T harness here so the way that you connect remove and lift up the latch fully lock in so after fully lock in it will looks like this most of the customer they have hard time to plug this in it's either half halfway out or the latch is not go down properly and end up they break the latch so this you will need to do it slowly slide in and make sure after lock it it looks like this and then after that this male connector it goes back to the factory radio the way to remove like to lift up the latch as you can see there's one hook over here so when we face down here you will need to push down this latch and then pull it back <coughs> to release this latch <coughs> so on this T harness you can keep this connector and connect keep this connector without using the aux jack <coughs> to the factory AMI cable so it's either one so if you have this connected then you don't need to run this cable but you still need to test the sound quality some of the vehicle if they come with like premium sound system there's two different ways to do it so it's either to have this connected without run this wire to the factory AMI cable like this cable so you don't need to connect it but if you have this connector disconnect from the harness if you have this disconnect then you have to run this aux cable and connect to the AMI female aux jack 
so this this way will have better sound quality but you still need to try on your vehicle to see the difference and also on the wire and you can see there's one small black box if you didn't get the sound or if you have some noise etc then you will need to open it because inside there's one audio filter you also can test it with or without this box so if you unplug it from the harness you will need to use the jumper plug instead of the audio filter so after that it will look like this so those are the options you will have to test it before you put everything back and no rush on that and the speaker wire for this uh, internal MMI you will need to keep these two wire connected and make sure they are connected properly not halfway in so the way you need, you will need to double check before you insulate it with electrical tape and leave it inside the dashboard and also this Android power harness come with one more USB cable which is shows CarPlay so this cable mainly for wire CarPlay and wire Android Auto. So whatever you, for your convenience, you can leave it on the side of the passenger panel here or <coughs> use the extension or just leave it uh, inside the glove box. So this way you can test it before you make decisions some of the usb extension may not work with the wire car play on this usb so it only works on the usb 2 because iphone they will detect the cable without using the extensions so you will need to make sure that test it before you put everything back again and the end you will need to run this power cable this is the power plug for the Android screen. You will need to run it, go to the right hand side, get through to the side of the glove box and all the way up to the top. So this way you can have better idea how to run the cable up there and the way that we connect to the backup camera yes, so after you have the power plug goes to the top so you can see on this power plug that plug into the back of the Android screen you will have 360 detect which is for manual transmission that needs to connect to the reverse wire if that apply on your vehicle uh, camera 12 volt is for automatic dvr ir no need to use rear cam you will need to use for aftermarket backup camera dvr power need to insulate but with electrical tape the pin wire is the AMI detect you don't need to use it so basically three four wires that you don't need to use just insulate it with electrical tape after that this is the main connection for the camera so you will need to connect to the camera RCA from the Android power harness shows rear camera in after you have this connected and you also need to connect the camera 12 volt so you can cut the connector <coughs> and then have the wire open now connect these two together so this way you, you can test the uh, backup camera and the unit will output the power so after you make this hot wiring connections you will need to put a electrical tape on it before you test it so basically there will be two <coughs> wide connector connect to the back <coughs> of the Android screen. So 
So these two connector will go to the back of the Android screen. And also there will be one 4G, 4G antenna and GPS antenna. So those are four connection goes to the back of the Android screen. If you have any other questions, you can send us an email to tech at 4x4shop.ca. Thank you and have a good day.